You know, try to extend yourself. We appoint today Brian Donnelly, one of the most eminently qualified people this parliament ever had to be a diplomat, and you can't deny it. And you know what they said? Oh, jobs for the boys. How do you like that? Let me remind you who National sent abroad. Some seriously untalented, and worse than that, people who would have been expelled from parliament had we known in this parliament what they were guilty of. Need I remind you who they were? No, I'll wait till they die. I'll wait till they die. But they over there all know. And so do some of those journalists, so they weren't such young pups. Know what I'm talking about. How dare they compare an eminently qualified, suitable person like Brian Donnelly to that? One appointment and they can't help but have a go. He's appointing his own mates. One guy in a long career, right? And they, they think that's a fair criticism. Now, for goodness sake, try a bit more this year to be neutral, balanced, unfair and slightly professional. I mean, the whole democracy depends upon the fourth estate being a watchdog, not a chihuahua, signed up to its ownership from abroad. And that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Mind you, I've got to tell the Minister of Broadcasting, somebody should be asking the TVNZ what the, on earth they think they're doing with the taxpayers' money. Bringing Tamaiti up there, up to Waitangi. Do they not know that the Tuhoi never signed the Treaty of Waitangi? You know, why bother go to Waitangi if you're so blessedly ignorant you don't know nothing about the history of New Zealand at all? And up comes Tamaiti, having borne his bum at the people and the Crown and everybody else, and they think that's news. Shame on you. The world deserves to see and should see a better New Zealand. But because of you and your irrelevant attitude and your blatant ignorance, you present that to the people abroad via telecommunications. Shame on you, a taxpayer-owned organisation. You know, I want to say something about uh, being right. Because recently, there I was, getting stuck in working on my beach property, neglected for far too many years serving the public of this country. And out of left field, I was watching six o'clock news and I saw a name called Abdili. And I thought, that name rings a bell to me. I remember this person. This person was a case I brought to Parliament. She'd come here, brought in by the National Party in 1994. She had for six years under the National Party, done what she liked, got a house paid for by the taxpayer, despite tens of thousands of people being waiting on the list. She had a list as long as your arm, as I said, as would make Al Capone proud. And, of all things, she then commits this offence, our first hijacking of an aeroplane. Now, let me remind you of one other fact. The Nelson District Health Board, just days before this event, declared her to be sane. And I'm wondering, and I'm saying perhaps we should have an investigation of the Nelson District Health Board by a psychologist, because, because if she's sane, they're not. They're not. But my point is there are hundreds and hundreds and thousands of these cases. You remember a guy called Mohammed Saidi? He was the one that said he couldn't go back to his country of origin because his life was imperiled. And some soft-headed people who have far too much prominence in this country said we agree with him. And so he just stayed long enough to get the residency and sufficient savings to go back to his country of origin for a holiday. For a holiday. Case after case after case. And what did some of the people in this parliament say, particularly to my friends in the National Party? Oh, he's racist. He leads a party of xenophobic people who are somehow prejudiced against others. Look, we don't even mind English, but I've got one here. <laughs> There's no party perfect, all right? But that's what they said, because they were only interested in one thing. A lot of their supporters agreed, but they knew the business round table liked cheap labor. And so if you keep, high, keep up high immigration, you drive wages down, you neglect to train and educate your own, and skill your own. And what happens here is a whole immigration numbers 
rises and goes to Australia, half of them came here. They're not New Zealanders in the first place. They used our country as a bolt hole and they make up the figures. And up gets Don Brash and now John Key and his ilk and says, oh, look at Australia. It's successful. That's why we leave, they're leaving New Zealand. Well, what policies did they pursue since 84 that ever helped this darn country? They even supported the Fonterra sale to international, the proposal to make Fonterra an international market commodity. John Keyes would love that idea. He's a broker. But right now, with the drought, how many farmers, if they've got any brains, would think that was a bright idea? The only thing that's saving them is that Fonterra is a New Zealand-owned company. A New Zealand-owned company. Same with the Auckland Airport. What is the National Party's view on the Auckland Airport? Not a word, not a whisper. Not a mutter, not a murmur. Because their political ownership and finance, financiers want them to argue for, national, for, for, for international ownership of our asset wealth. For privatisation. For overseas ownership. What do they say about banking charges, National Party? This be time the National Party, because it was a national party, believed in the word nationalism, was very strong on banking and banking practice and banking costs. Today, not a mother from any of these people, apart from one Bob Clarkson telling everybody he can, fill, he can fix up every leaky home for $20,000. That's what he said. And he can fix up Tauranga's new stadium, there's requirements for uh, two-thirds the price the council wants to fix it for. Apart from the fact, of course, he just flogged off Bay Park, which is a white elephant and a loser, to the ratepayers of Tauranga, and it's costing him a fortune. And Bob's just gone off and bought a couple of new farms worth almost $24 million, haven't you, Bob? Oh, yes, because Bob's a property developer. Bob's not a builder. He's a property developer speculator. <laughs> it's true. Bob doesn't know I know that, do you, Bob? He's not saying too much now. But all I'm saying to Bob is, come on, Bob, you're going to stand on Tauranga this year? You've bluffed everybody else. And I know they don't want you, but are you going to stand on Tower on this year, Bob? Uh-uh, not hearing anything, am I? Oh, not so loud now. I know the National Party's mates have got all these young, bright little lawyers. Uh, they don't believe in humanity, of course, just themselves, lining up to take up from Bob. So, Bob, are you standing in Tower on I'm sure the Speaker would like to know. That not that I can bring it to the debate. Yes or no? Not a word. Not a word. Oh, no, he was bluffing on about, you know, if Winston stands, I'm going to stand. Well, only a full test of water with both feet, Bob. <laughs> but are you standing or aren't you? Oh, well, you know, I suppose if you get uh, the ratepayers of Tauranga to pick up a white elephant, uh, which you said was a gift to the people, and said, when you do the fiscals, it looks pretty bad, it required 39 full nights to pay itself, and they can't fill it for nine. Especially when Blue Chip, who he went with, you know, and when he dumped Bay of Western Bay Finance, he goes with Blue Chip. You hear this company called Blue Chip? Making a lot of headlines right now. They're the co-sponsors with Bob. And Bob thought, I better unload this real fast. I know what I'll do. I will do what all Tories of late do. Not the old-fashioned Tory, but the new breed. I'll socialise my problems and my debts. I'll get a taxpayer, or in this case, the ratepayer, to pick it up. Oldest trick in the book. Faye Rishwhite invented it, Bob's refined it. <laughs> Only in a local way, down there in Tower Honor. 